Dr. Massimino. Chairman Cruz. Chairman Cruz, Ranking Members Nelson and Udall, and members of the subcommittee. Thank you very much for having me here today. I've got to do some cool stuff in my life, and this is right up there. I really am honored to be here. Thank you. Um, I want to describe to you a few things that I learned as an astronaut, uh, some benefits uh, that our space program has provided, not only for our country, but I think for the whole world. And there's three of them I want to point out from my personal experience. And then I want to tell you a story uh, from one of my space flights that I think kind of wraps it up. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, the first benefit I want to tell you about is how the human exploration program can benefit science and life on Earth. And there's lots of examples we can use, but the one I'm most familiar with is the one I got to participate in firsthand, and that's the Hubble Space Telescope Servicing Program. Both of my shuttle flights were to the Hubble Space Telescope. And Hubble has given us some great discoveries. So far, one Nobel Prize, and I say so far because I think there's a lot more coming. 25th anniversary of the telescope is in orbit is coming this spring. And it's given us a window into the universe out there. It's uh, found black holes, uh, dark matter, dark energy, inspired many people to continue studying the universe, and it's shown us the beauty and the wonder of what's out there. But none of this would have been possible without human exploration, without the shuttle program, spacewalking astronauts, our ground control team to be able to, uh, to react to problems and get the job done so that we can provide that great instrument to the astronomers and scientists on the ground. So the human exploration program and how it can affect science and benefits on Earth. The second thing I want to point out is international cooperation. Uh, when I was a new astronaut in 1996, uh, we were starting to work with our international partners to build the space station. None of, it, none of the elements had launched yet. And sitting there listening to the briefings as a, a new person, not knowing really what was going on at the time, I, I wondered how are we going to make this work? How are we going to work with all these countries of Europe, with Japan, with Canada, and with the Russians? The U.S. was clearly going to be a leader, but how are we going to work with everybody? Different cultures, different languages, different ways of doing things, different systems of measurement. How are we going to make this all work? And what I discovered was when we all had a common goal, it didn't matter what country you were from. We wanted to build a space station. We wanted to produce this laboratory. And with that common goal, we were able to achieve a great thing, which is the International Space Station, which is orbiting above us right now. So international cooperation is the second benefit that I discovered of the space program. And the third is inspiration for young people. Okay, I'm sitting next to two of my boyhood heroes. I watched this man walk on the moon when I was six years old, and it changed my life. And it inspired me to become an astronaut. And most of the, not too many younger than me can remember that, but the ones who are at least my age and older that I trained with will point to that episode, what Walt and Buzz did as astronauts that inspired us as young people. And as an astronaut, I often wondered, you know, what are we doing now that's going to get this next generation of American kid uh, interested in studying math and science and going to space? And I never, it never was really clear to me until lately. This past year, I've been teaching up at Columbia. I'm, I'm a, uh, now I left NASA. I'm a, I'm a professor up at Columbia. And there are some smart kids up there, right? And what I found was they are just as excited as me and my colleagues were years ago about the space program. And it's not just NASA inspiring them. I've had lots of students who have gone uh, to work for, for NASA, different NASA centers, for NASA contractors. But these kids want to change the world, and they want to be entrepreneurial. They see the space program as a way that they can be entrepreneurial. They see these really smart, successful entrepreneurs putting their efforts into trying to help the economy through space. And they see these people as role models that they want to follow. So it's almost, I think, better than when I was a kid in some ways because it's not just NASA doing big projects. It's also this entrepreneurial spirit where they think they can have provide economic benefits for the world as well. Um, the story I want to tell you. On my second space flight, or my first space flight, my second spacewalk, I had a chance to look around. During, during the spacewalk. And at Hubble, we're about 100 miles higher than where the station was, nowhere near as far as Buzz was away from the planet. But I was able to see the curvature of the Earth, and you can see it in its entirety. It takes up your whole field of view, but it's really beautiful. And my first spacewalk, I kind of stuck to my job. And my second spacewalk, I wanted to see what it was like. And there are really no words to describe to you how beautiful our planet is from up there. So I'll just tell you what was going through my mind. And the first thought was, if you were in heaven, this is what you would see. If you could be up there in heaven, you could look down on our planet and you would see how beautiful it is. And I was thinking about it, and it, it, it wasn't enough. And I thought, no, no, it's more than that. It's more beautiful than that. This is what heaven must look like. And at that moment, I felt like I was looking into paradise. 
That's how beautiful our planet is. It's fragile, it's a paradise, and we need to take care of it. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you for that uh, powerful and evocative imagery as well.